really pretty crisp, actually cold, fall morning. We got more leaf color this year than we expected, so it turned out pretty nice. It is super brisk outside. Man, today's like uh, November 16th or 15th, I don't know, but uh, definitely fall is here. Welcome back to the ICF Mountain Circus. If you've been following us for the last few videos, we've been doing all kinds of things involving cabinets. We've been building out our kitchen in the new homestead here with the ready to assemble uh, frosty white cabinets uh, from Cabinet Joint. Got all that pretty much done, got the hardware on. I love the way it looks. Oil rub bronze, five inch pulls, all pulls, no knobs. That was just something I wanted to try. Turned out good. Gonna put those all throughout the house. This is the fourth video, I think, in the uh, little series we did. If you missed any of it and you're interested in how to do anything ready to assemble cabinet-wise, first video was what to expect and an intro. Second video was how to assemble basically every type of cabinet they make. Third video was getting everything installed and all the little tips and tricks that I used. And now today I'm gonna start building vanities for the bathrooms and laundry cabinets and get those installed. Uh, this is our second order of cabinets. We finished the first order, which was all the white ones. Second order is all stained cherry. I'm gonna try and get all these done as quickly as I can and accurately so that I can move on to building our kitchen island, which will probably be the video after this one because all these videos have been pretty long lately and I um, don't know how far to push that before people were like, man, this is boring. So uh, thanks to Ariat for sponsoring this video. We appreciate their support. They're a great partner for our channel. Right now is the time when all of the fall and winter uh, cold weather workwear comes out. And that's some of my favorite stuff they make, like this reversible uh, hoodie. You can wear it either inside or outside like that. It's got the puffy warmness in it. And this year they got these sweet flannels. Uh, this is the rebar work flannels. Got your little lens cleaning cloth inside with the pen slot that I like with all their pocketed shirts. This is nice and warm, kind of looks cool. It's gonna be my new favorite little overthrow shirt for the next little while. Really like it. Check them out for this holiday season and uh, get yourself or your loved ones some warm goodies. Let's go build some cabinets. So here's a bit of a unique one. Cool little custom wall unit for the uh, upstairs bathroom. We're going to have two of these on each side of a countertop. So this is a custom size wall unit, a big extended style to the left. So we, if we need to, we can trim it and, and scribe it to the wall. It's got two drawers, a bunch of shelves, door. Pretty cool. One of the examples of custom stuff you can do with a cabinet joint and uh, so this will kind of set down, basically sit down on the countertop, screw it to the wall, and we'll have a couple of drawers. I don't know, I think it's pretty neat. Jamie found this neat design on uh, the internet, probably Pinterest or something. 
because we were trying to figure out what we would do with that upstairs bathroom where there's a window in the dormer and just a bunch of space. And we thought about making a little desk type area where you could sit, like a vanity where you could sit and do makeup or whatever. And so that's kind of the idea. It'll be this, a window, another one of those, and then a place to kind of sit and do whatever girls do. I don't know. So I've been assembling this custom six drawer, two door uh, vanity base cabinet. And these are a little different because you gotta do a little bit of extra work. So let's see, I got the sides on, they're normal, like the, the regular sides. Uh, these, they've got these side strips with um, the splines in the front of the strip that goes into the face frame. These are dovetailed. All that's pretty normal. It took me a minute to figure out where those went. Uh, but <clears throat> the pilot holes for the drawers, slides are already back there. And the weird thing about it is this divider panel. Uh, I guess because these are optional. So they don't pre-route any of the dados or any splines for the face frame. Um, I guess if they did do that and you didn't want to use these, then you'd have ugly dados that would be visible. But uh, so this is for people, if you don't want the dividers because your plumbing comes in in a weird place, like, you know, if your plumbing came in right there and you had to route it over there, you don't want a divider panel in the way. But our, we don't have that situation. So I'm definitely putting these panels in to separate the drawers from the sink area. So you just have to measure your space between the wall and the inside of the face frame, mark it. And I've done that, it's 11 and a quarter. Uh, ran a pencil line from there down and then along the floor. And you line up your inside divider panel thingy to that line. So I've got this perfectly flush with the uh, face frame right here so that when I put the drawer slides in they'll lay right against this and I can screw them to the side of this divider panel and I won't really need the back L clip on the left side but I will on the right side because it holds it off of the uh, right side wall and lets the the drawer slide basically sit like that with this gap between the slide and the wall so uh, how do you fasten it? Well, I drew a line on the back and just pinned it, clamped it, pinned it. And I, get, I just got it started, so I'll finish it once I get the, the top, the, the rest of this done. Now I gotta figure out this. So you can either use a block and screw the block to the divider panel and to the face frame from the inside, or you can pocket hole it like I'm about to. I just clamped my little pocket hole jig there. I'm gonna run a pocket hole uh, top, middle, and bottom, and being sure not to get it, being sure not to get it like in this area or at the very bottom because your hinges need to wrap around this face frame. So I'll put one here where it won't hit it, and probably like right there. And there she is. And then we have to cut holes in the back wall for the plumbing. So that will sit right there. And now we gotta build a little custom fake door thing that matches that cabinet. And it's basically just gonna cover that air return. Here are the two upstairs custom wall cabinets with drawers underneath. These, I say they're wall cabinets, but they're kind of like an appliance garage in that they just sort of sit down onto the countertop, but they are fastened to the wall. And uh, this one had a broken face frame, like snapped right in half. And I thought I was gonna end up having to have it replaced, but I was able to glue it up and you can't even tell where the crack was. In fact, I'm not even sure if that's the right one. It could be that one. But at one point, it was snapped either there or there. I can't remember which one it was. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Right there is that little crack. And I mean, nobody's ever gonna notice that. 
and that glue joint is never coming apart. It's stronger than the wood. Moving on to the upstairs bath. This is turning out good. I got the toilet set, but I still have to do the plumbing. That was pretty easy. And these are 10 inch rough end toilets because of where our floor joists go. There was a joist there, so we couldn't use standard 12 inch rough ends. I had to get 10 inch, but they're actually pretty nice as far as toilets go. And uh, so we got this little base with three drawers. Then there'll be a double butt door cabinet. And this is an interesting one. This is a blind corner base, unlike a corner pie cut base, like you would put a Lazy Susan in. This is a full width cabinet. And that has a blind corner, they call it. So that's kind of how that sits. And you get into the back corner, you just got to reach in there and get it. But uh, th I did that because there's not a lot of room in here and I didn't want a lazy Susan in there or anything weird. I just wanted that to be squared off. Um, so this has a really nice wide extended style here. So you have room to open your drawers and uh, you can op open the door and it'll, it'll clear. Um, I'm not 100% sure which way we're gonna orient the hinges on that door, but that's not a big deal. Here's the sink vanity. Uh, whereas the downstairs one has a divider panel in between the door part and the drawer part. This does not, uh, I guess because they don't know for sure where your plumbing is gonna be, but I designed this specifically for the plumbing and I have to cut that out. Once I get it leveled and marked and figured out, we'll come right through there and should be centered right in that space there where the sink will go. But this one, this bathroom was a little bit of a challenge designing because this is a weird space. You know, we put this dormer here uh, just to, <laughs> so we could have a bathroom up here. And then you got this weird window. So I was like, well, how are we gonna do this? Well, the idea is those two wall cabinets with the drawers underneath, you know, they go on each side and then we'll pull the power into the cabinet. Uh, and that'll let you like plug a hair dryer in and you just keep it in a drawer. So you just pull it out and fire it up or curling irons or whatever, you know, people use. Um, so there'll be power in those cabinets and anything that you plug in, you can hide in the cabinets. And so you won't have any clutter on the countertop, which will be hoy across there. And then uh, you can just, I don't know, that's kind of just the way it is. But right there, we're making progress. Here's our shower, which you probably have seen in the uh, tile video. If you haven't seen that video, this is the shower. It turned out really nice and uh, I'm waiting on the glass door guy to come and measure still. Um, but at some point we've got to put glass doors there. So this is going to be a pretty fancy bathroom. Pretty happy with that. Turning out nice. Really like how this wood is turning out. This is a finished end panel on that uh, uh, bath vanity and kind of goes pretty good with everything else. Matches the floor nice. That light's weird, it makes the floor look blue, but you know, it's not. It all just sort of goes together pretty well. So I wanna take a little moment, sidebar, if you'll indulge me for a minute, to nerd out over some tools for a second. I have a lot of different brands of tools I've used over the years, and I like the Makita corded tools. I have a circular saw and a power planer, never had any problem with that. I actually cut that cord one time with the saw blade, and I had to fix it in one of my videos. Uh, the corded DeWalt tools that I have, the Sawzall and all that, uh, always been a great tool. Unfortunately, the pneumatic tools from DeWalt I've had not good luck with. This is the framing nailer I've had forever, and if you have ever had one of these go bad, maybe you saw the video I made, the seals quit working, I had to replace the O-rings in this, so I made a video on how to do that, because it was just psh, 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 shooting air, not nails. Got that fixed. That does still work but it's temperamental. It likes to go off whenever the nose isn't pushed down, even when you have the right uh, trigger thingy set up. 
This is my DeWalt um, finish nailer. I was using this to install all the doors in this house and it quit working. Same problem. I haven't fixed it because I'm sick and tired of air tools. I've been using this generic Chinese made brad nailer for years. I've never had it misfire once. Weird. I've been using it on this cabinet project. You've been watching me fasten all these cabinets together with this, but this freaking hose keeps getting hung up and I'm tired of it. I've been wanting a cordless one for a while. Let's talk about cordless tools. I've been using exclusively the, the cobalt, the blue ones. I like this platform because it's a 24 volt platform. I've never had a single problem with it. Um, I like all their tools except for the circular saw because the blade's on the right side and I'm right handed and I'm, when I'm cutting something you gotta like kind of look around to try and find the blade and the line and I just didn't like it. I was, I've been kind of waiting for a circular saw with where the blade's on the left side. And when I got this, I was like, I didn't know that was a thing. So, uh, but Cobalt has been the only platform I've used as far as cordless tools because I didn't want to switch battery platforms. I didn't know I have multiple battery, battery platforms. Uh, but today, we're going to try some new stuff because our partners at Northern Tool and Equipment have come through for us once again and they sent us a couple toys to try. These are the Milwaukee. 18-volt uh, deal. You uh, probably seen everybody use these. I just have never had a Milwaukee tool. So this is a rear-handled 15-amp, seven and a quarter-inch circular saw with the blade on the left side. It's kind of like a worm drive skill saw, but it's pa uh, battery-powered. So huh. a little dust port, so you can hook up a dust collector to it. That's freaking awesome. Wow, that's legit. That's like a full-size saw. I already like this. I put the dust port on so you can hook it up to the dust collector. I like that this has clear markings to set the blade depth. So for my trim that I'll be doing on these cabinets, set it to one inch and a quarter, boom, done. Good sled, e easy easy to cut back bevels. There's a little spot so you can put a guy, an edge guide that comes out. Freaking rafter hanger, check that out. What I'm really excited about though is the 18 gauge brad nailer kit with the battery. Not using this anymore. We're gonna unbox this bad boy and build this next cabinet with this new brad nailer. So we'll get that charging. Comes with a cool duffel bag to carry crap around in. The little bumper tip on the on the top on the front so that you don't dent your material that you're working with. My other one does not have that. It's just like solid metal. And it's also got a sweet belt clip. So you can pull your pants down while you're up on the ladder. Can't wait to get this thing going. I'm gonna get this battery charged up, and then we're gonna rock and roll. Thanks again to Northern Tool for working with us on this. We really appreciate their support and they're a great partner. Uh, they got tools for everybody. They got service centers at all their stores. If you need stuff fixed or worked on or help, they're great. Check them out at northerntool.com. Let's get back to this cabinet. So in the time it took me to unbox and assemble this cabinet, the battery was charged. I mean, it is a small, like two and a half amp hour battery, but give this thing a shot, turn it on with the button, then you can set the mode if you just want single action or bump action. I like that it comes with extra little bumper thingies for the, for the tip, and your depth gauge is right here. Ooh, perfect. Huh, love it. Put that a little bit deeper. One click. Perfect. <sighs> no more cords. <laughs> well, that was nice. I 
our second order of cabinets are assembled. All the cabinet boxes are put together and now I get to <laughs> install everything. People commented that this side toe kick is flush and it's not inset like the rest. And originally I thought, well, that's not a big deal to me because I'm never gonna actually be here with my toes. Like if you're using the oven, you're opening it out, out into here and everything, but it's still, it doesn't look right. I went back and looked at the plans and it's actually designed to have a toe kick inset there and inset there. And there was a note on it, um, on the order that said it had to be modified in the field because they don't offer an option to have a toe kick on two different sides like that. So I can either trim it out with baseboard or I can modify this cabinet. And I'm, I've been thinking about it all night and I'm leaning towards cutting this off and moving it back and basically making two toe kicks. And then when we trim it, it'll look right and it'll match all the rest. Problem is it's already screwed in, it's already caulked and sealed and there's no gaps and it's kind of perfect. Uh, I think I'm gonna pull this cabinet and cut it. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I cut up a few pieces of half inch to mock up a toe kick box corner thingy. And got it glued, clamped, about to shoot it with nails. Go stick it on that cabinet and see if it works. So I wanted to test out the new Milwaukee worm drive saw on oh, making this cut, but I couldn't because the blades are different than the regular saw. They got this weird diamond thingy in the middle. This saw came with a framing blade, which has 24 teeth to the blade, and I need a lot of teeth to do fine work like that. So I ordered a 70 tooth with the funny little diamond arbor thing. And that'll be here in a couple days. like that. Had to take this little uh, drawer slide off to get to the screw behind it that fastens that cabinet to this cabinet. This just to fix a toe kick. But I've spent so much time and effort in trying to make this whole thing perfect. It doesn't make sense to mess it up now. And it only took about an hour to figure out what I was doing. Now we got a toe kick. I don't know, it all kind of looks right, but. All right, cool, done. Starting on the stair treads and risers, getting everything stained. Haven't seen you in a while. No. Today, uh, I'm gonna work on this vanity in the bathroom. This is uh, like a six drawer, two door deal. This would be a false drawer. I'm gonna put a sink here. Uh, I got a cabinet to the right that is just a door and a false panel over here that we're gonna have to build in uh, to hide this air return. First thing I need to do, I got the center line marked on the cabinet. Need to find the center line on the wall, basically that goes directly above the uh, drain and the plumbing inlets. The good thing about this is when I drill this, I can drill the back and slide it onto the plumbing versus the kitchen sink, which I had to lift down over on top of the plumbing. And that was a 
pretty difficult doing that by myself. Might be difficult for me to do a lot of filming in here because there's not much space. And I've got the work light and the laser and a whole bunch of other junk in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in. Okay, so I wanted to clarify a little bit of how I am laying all this out, finding my center lines, figuring out exactly where my plumbing goes on the cabinet and all of those things. When you're trying to lay out a vanity cabinet or a sink cabinet or any of that where you have to drill for plumbing, you want to center it. Like if it's a kitchen sink, you want to center it under your kitchen window. If it's a, a vanity, you want to center it right at the plumbing. So the first thing you want to do is find your center line on your vanity cabinet and then find your center line uh, on your wall. And you don't want to measure off of any of your cabinets or anything that moves, anything that you're trying to install. You want to go on a fixed surface with a fixed line that does not move the entire time you're doing the installation. So first thing is to find your uh, top line where the top of your cabinets need to come to uh, to be consistent because floors differ. Now in this room, the bathroom, the finished floor is already installed so I don't have to accommodate a, a count for that floor thickness um, like I did in the kitchen where we had to account for an extra quarter inch of the floor that will be installed later. We already have the floor in here, so I measured up from the floor 34 and a half, which is the height of the cabinet. And I did that on each side of the wall. Over here, I put the line, the laser line, right on my 34 and a half tick mark because my tick mark over here is lower. So that drops about uh, a quarter of an inch from over there to over here. And you want to always go by your highest tick mark. And that establishes your level line uh, at the highest point. So over here we'll be shimming a little bit, over here we won't be. So I got my level line, now I need to find my center line. And I'm centering, I've measured my uh, drain pipe here that comes out of the wall, found the center, put the laser, the vertical laser right on that, and that is my center line. So I'm gonna put a little pencil mark here and a CL for center line. So now, all I have to do is measure down from this line to the center of my each of my pipes. Make that mark, and then once uh, I have this shimmed up and level, I measure down that exact same amount as what matches my wall, and make my mark, and that's where I drill. Then you should be able to just push it right on. Always go by your laser line, don't measure on your wall and then measure on your cabinet and it, without accounting for the shimming or any of that or you'll be off and you'll be mad at yourself. So that's just a quick how I'm doing this type of deal. There's my center line and here is my plumbing. This is the drain and the hot and cold. So from the center line uh, on the cabinet, the center line matches directly above the, the drain and I go down 15 and a half inches to the center of this pipe. And that's where I'm going to put my three inch hole saw. I've got a three inch hole to account for this two and two and a half, whatever it is, two and three quarter pipe. So then I moved the laser over to the tick mark directly above the hot pot, the, the, this water inlet, so that the laser was perfectly straight made my mark there so I could see it above the cabinet and I measured from the center line over and I got three and three quarters. So I got to come over and then go down 19 inches to the center of this pipe where I will make a one inch hole. Same thing on this side. From the center line I had to measure over two and a quarter and down 18 and three quarters and I got that measurement by making, like I said, making a tick mark directly above the center of where the pipe comes out, lining that laser up on that tick mark, measuring from there to the center line. All that put on the wall. I will transfer all those measurements directly to the back of my cabinet where I have marked my center line. So we'll go down 15 and a half, make a three inch hole, etc etc and then we should be able to just slide this cabinet back onto the plumbing okay i made my hole cuts 
from the back of the cabinet. Now we're gonna slide it in and see if she fits. Well, look at that. Well, that looks good. Looks good to me. Works perfect. All right, so I just finished cutting a 20 degree back bevel on this right extended style, getting all this set, leveled, got the face frames clamped and screwed together, got everything shimmed and fastened to the wall and the cabinet to each other. Here's a little trick. Uh, if you run into this, where this is real tight to the wall and maybe by a 32nd or a 16th or so, and you're not on a stud here, you could fudge it by clamp spreading the wall, just move the drywall just a little wee bit. Now once you get everything set, you can let it go. Now you've got a perfect, perfect fit with no gaps. Next part is going to be a little bit of a unique challenge. I've got to build a false panel enclosure around this air return. This air return grill filter thing will go there, but it comes in, goes down to the basement to the air handler. So I'm going to frame in some blocking to support a countertop. Uh, and then do a piece down there and a piece along this wall to fasten this face frame to. They built me a custom face frame. That I need to scribe to the wall. and fasten that there, and then we'll put a fake door on it. Pretty productive day, pretty happy. Got it all set. Got this uh, false frame mounted and scribed. Turned out pretty good. And uh, put all the blocking in there for the countertop. So I debated on whether to screw this door onto this frame from the back but decided that I'm just gonna glue it onto the frame when I set all the other doors and drawers so I can make sure I got it perfect. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Now I'm gonna have to deal with this toe kick down here because this air return is out closer than the actual toe kicks. So I'm probably just gonna build around it once I put the toe kick on, just kind of box it in. I don't think it'll be that big a deal, but that's all I can do anyway, because we're not moving any of the air return or anything else. Okay, it's the next day. Finished the downstairs bathroom yesterday. Today we're gonna start on the upstairs bathroom cabinets, and uh, we have a few more cabinets in this bathroom than we did in the downstairs, so. My laser died, unfortunately, so I had to break out the big daddy. That's the grading laser that does 360 degree line, but it's blinky. So it's a little more annoying, whereas that laser is steady, solid line. That where that line is on that tick mark is the high spot. We are going to end up with pretty much no casing on the bottom of this window, because once we put the countertop in, it's gonna be almost flush. So we'll just put a sill in there and bring the casing down to the countertop, I suppose. Not a big deal. I think it'll look all right when it's done. But floor drops, so we're gonna have to shim that up to the line a little bit. And uh, sink base goes over here. We're gonna have to shim that up a little bit. Using a one inch auger bit for my supply lines, two and a half inch hole saw, drain line. And when you, when I do this, I go in from both sides so I don't blow out and get raggy holes. So you let this 
uh, with an auger bit, you go in and you let it kind of work, go to where it stops. It wants to stop once this penetrates the other side. So then you can switch and go in from the other side and you have a clean hole on both sides. See, that's where it wanted to stop. So we'll come in from this side and finish the hole. And that's much cleaner than if you just pushed it through going one way. Definitely make sure you've got a hold of this with both hands if you're using a big bit like this because it wants to torque and it'll break your wrist. Uh, this drill has a handle that you can put on it if you want to, but I only ever really use that when I'm trying to drill through something like Black Locust or something. Nice, clean holes. So I've decided to work on this corner, uh, blind corner base cabinet first and get it set and leveled. Then I can fit the vanity to it and figure out exactly how much I need to deal with here because a blind corner base has this open space that's blocked by the other cabinet. And the only way to get to it is this door and then you go back in there. Um, and so when this one is butted up against there, we want to make sure that the door opens and I'm probably going to have it open this way, hinges here. And when that, when this cabinet is set against the wall, it's going to leave enough for the door to open, but the door will hit the drawers. So you can only use one at a time, right? So uh, the other thing you could do, if I put the hinges over here and opened it this way, I mean, that's an option, not a bad option because the door opens you know, quite a bit farther than 90 degrees. Um, I haven't decided how I'm going to do the door yet, but um, setting this will help me determine how much of this style to trim off to get it up against the cabinet and still have my clearances for the drawer overhang and all those things. And I, and I want to move this cabinet in as far as I can to give me more room to get out the door because uh, everything's a little tight here. I mean, there's enough room now, but if I can get even another inch, uh, once the countertop's on, you know, it extends maybe an inch or so beyond the top. And I just don't want anybody hitting their hips or something on, a, on the countertop as they're going out the door. So, but first, you know, you don't have a door or anything for here, but uh, so I just cut a piece of half inch plywood panel to basically create a dust shield. So whatever you put in here doesn't fall down in between the cabinets because you're going to have the space whatever this width is stuff inevitably is going to fall back in there and you're just not going to be able to get to it so I'm going to block that off with a piece of half inch plywood and that should sit perfectly right there trim the left style about an inch and a half Let's see if she fits Good to me. All right, I got all the doors and drawers mounted. Doors are on the hinges like they're supposed to be with little bumpers. This reveal turned out really nice. This uh, is like a set of butt doors. There's no style there. So there's a nice big open area. These are really nice doors. So uh, the drawer fronts are glued on with CA glue. If you uh, watched my previous video, I showed how I do all that. Uh, got my half inch reveal between the door and drawers and between each drawer front. And I'm going to start putting the hardware on. These are all pulls, no knobs, just like I did in the kitchen. So these are the five inch pulls we got. These turned out really nice. Uh, I'm really happy with the quality of them for being like an Amazon type of deal. Uh, give you a little template if you want to use that. They give you two sets, two different lengths of screws, long ones for your drawer fronts because you have to go through the drawer front and the drawer box. 
shorter ones for just going through a cabinet door. They work great. I put in a whole bunch in the kitchen, as you saw. Now I'm gonna do these. It's gonna look nice. I've seen people, when you have a bank of three different sized drawers like this, I've seen where they center this one, and then in this one they have this kind of raised, and then this one is kind of at the top. If you put it at the bottom, it's kind of hard to get. I think I'm gonna mock this one up this time before I do it. Okay, after a few moments of nerding out, I've decided to mount it like that so that the top of the pool is even with that line right there. I kind of think that looks the best. Definitely looks better than that. And that looks kind of old, like too old fashioned-y. I don't know. That seems to look good. What if we centered that? Mm, nah. All right, that's where I'm gonna do it. Problem with that is my little template here doesn't have a place, doesn't have a hole for there. This particular one has the whole quarter inch from the top, so that is going to be basically two and two and five thirty seconds <laughs> from the top to the hole. And then I'll just come in one inch from the side. And that also helps me not have any place where I'm gonna hit the face frame behind the door. Cause that has happened before. You're drilling into it and you just bang into the face frame and that makes your day not awesome. And using a brand new bit so it doesn't try to walk away on me. Yep, I like that a lot. That's what we'll do for the rest of them. Well, that's a pretty good amount of storage. All the shelf pins and the shelves are in. Looks good. Drawers turned out great, so. Some drawers over here that work good. Love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait to do this until I get the countertop and the sink in. Because I don't really like false drawer fronts for sinks. So I'm gonna put uh, those soft clothes tip out, tip out hinges make that a little tip out tray but I want to do that until we get everything set so I know how much clearance I have so that if I don't have to use a standard two and a half or whatever they are deep tip out if I have a little extra room I'll build something custom and you can keep all your goodies in there so that'll do it for the upstairs bath vanity for now um, turned out gorgeous Really liking this color and the uh, hardware goes good with the floor, although the floor is a little dusty and dirty and needs cleaned up, but the only thing left is casing for the window, a countertop, a sink, some baseboard, and glass shower door. So I started working on this vanity, got the doors done. They all work great. Then I discovered that my door, uh, my drawer pulls are too big for these drawers. These are five inch pulls. And they're too big. So I have to order, I'm gonna try probably, see if I can find four inch because I still want them to be big, but not too big. So I'm not gonna be able to finish putting these drawer fronts on until I get those in. Uh, and I also ordered some clips to fasten that uh, panel, that false panel to that frame there. So I had to wait till those come in before I can finish putting these fronts on. That's pretty much all I can do with this 
until then, so I'm gonna move on to laundry, finish it all up.